What's going on gamers? Welcome back to Tell Splash Gaming. I'm Chris. If this is your first time visiting, thanks for popping in and hanging out with the old trollster today. But I'm getting down to the brass tacks of business. I got a five minute review on an indie game coming out April 16th, developed by QPlays, published by Joybits, called Galaxy Warfighter. It's a side-scrolling bullet hell shmup featuring over a hundred levels. Now I've had an early review copy sent to me and I've played through about 60% of this game, so I've got a pretty good opinion on what it's all about. And even though I got this review copy, that does not mean my opinion is going to be swayed one way or the other. And I want to give you guys an honest opinion on what I think of this game. Stick around, let's take a look. Alright, let's start off talking about Galaxy Warfighter with the quick little graphical overview. If you're familiar with the 8 to 16-bit era, you are going to feel right at home in this side-scrolling shmup. It looks like it's a mix between NES, Super NES, or the Genesis style with an HD overlay. So it really goes back to that old-school nostalgic feel of playing some games like Gradius, like Life Force, like UN Squadron. So it really feels great and it looks great wide away. The next thing I want to go is a few gameplay mechanics. So first off, the one thing you'll notice is there's no fire button. Your ship fires straight away. Which is kind of unique, so there's no fire button, there's no holding a button down, there's no button mashing at all. The game is basically you avoiding obstacles with a constant stream of fire coming out of your ship, and that's all you have to control is avoiding obstacles and hitting enemies. It's really a unique gameplay that I've really never played recently that I can think of off the top of my head. Instead of having to mash buttons all the time and hold it down and charge up shots, it just has a constant stream of bullets coming out of your ship, so that way you're more focused on the enemies themselves and obstacles and grabbing power-ups more so than having to actually fire the fire button non-stop. The game features an upgrade system for your ship, which has armor, it has shield, it has drones that kind of fly around with you and shoot bullets, it has weapon upgrades, it has a stop time, which is literally what you would think it is. It stops time dead in its tracks so you can get away or shoot things or kill them. And then it has this force field that shoots out and basically it's like a blast wave that goes out and kind of just blasts everybody, like a sonic boom of sorts. And those are your upgrade system. And you get the upgrades by collecting these green coins as you take down enemies. They release coins, take down bombs, you get these coins and they basically let you go back to the shop and upgrade. The way this worked for me is I would play the game until I couldn't beat a level, then I would use the money I collected to go back, upgrade my ship, and I could progress through the game. Kind of roguelike in a sense. So that gives you a basic overview of the gameplay and the graphics. Now, starting off with this game, it says over a hundred levels with progressing difficulty. And that is true. But without getting too deep into it, this is what I can say. A hundred levels is a lot. And to go from pretty easy, starting at level 1, to all the way to 100, the progression to get difficult takes a while. I finally, after getting to level 60, started to feel like I was playing a true bullet hell and had to start playing with more skill. The first 50 or so levels, I was pretty much able to get by by using my upgrades and just playing the game kind of nonchalantly while going through levels. That's neither a positive nor a negative, depending on who it is. If you're a novice, this would be a great way to get into a game like this without having to get destroyed like Cuphead. Where in Cuphead, you're a couple levels in, you have to memorize the entire level or else you're going to get killed. This, you don't need to memorize everything. You can really play it kind of casually through the first 40 levels or so before you have to start using skill. For veterans of the genre, it might be a little off-putting because you want to get into something that might be a little difficult. Maybe level one or two you don't mind being easy, but you, once you get the feel of the game and you know what you're doing, you want to get right into it. And this game does not get you into that right away. Starting off level one, your ship is very bare bones. You're basically just a ship with a straight line of fire. Enemies are coming at you. They're not firing much. There's not a lot of obstacles. You're basically doing kind of like a tutorial, just going through. You're, you're killing enemies. You're collecting your, your green coins and then you're going through and you're fighting a boss at the end. Now the bosses I thought were going to be really, really cool, and, the, and they are pretty neat, except this. The bosses are recycled throughout the entire game. And what I mean by that is there's probably about half a dozen bosses, and you play the same bosses over and over. So I'm on level 60, I've seen the same boss 10 times. I've seen each boss 10 times. Again, is that good or bad? And this is why I think it's not great. The bosses don't really change their tactics much up through level 60. Not a whole lot has changed as I've been playing this game. Now again, is that necessarily a bad thing? No, that doesn't mean that every single level has to have a new boss with a new gameplay mechanic that has to change every single time. It depends on what you want to experience in the game. For me, as an indie game at $6, this game does a fantastic job with the controls and the gameplay. It is super tight. Everything feels great. When I got hit, it was my fault. When I hit enemies, the hit detection was fantastic. And the bosses, as 
kind of unique as they were in the beginning did become a bit monotonous, but they were still really cool ideas, and I liked that. By the time I got to level 60, I was really having fun with the game. I mean, I'm ready to play it some more. I really enjoyed it. It just took a long time to get that feeling. The first 10 or 15 levels, it was all new, so it felt great. Then it started to get a little bit monotonous from levels 15 to about 45, and then about level 45, 50 is when it started to get harder where I had to open my eyes up, grab that controller, and start looking around at things. In the levels themselves, there are power-ups to help you. There's one that makes your gun turn into more of like a red laser. It makes it really fun. It looks cool on the screen. I love seeing the explosions. Another one shoots out these little bullets that go in a complete circle one way, and they just kind of blow up everything in the area. Another one will destroy everything on screen, which is always fun. And then another one is another version of that circle expanding, except it's more circles. It's like three or four in a row. Boom, boom, boom. They fly out and they hit. It makes it really, really unique to have those power-ups. But again, the power-ups and things don't change from level one to level 60. It's all kind of the same and it's very much reused and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not gonna have fun playing it but if you're looking for something that's completely different, completely unique, this one may not be the exact shmup for you. I'm enjoying it and I actually want to see what it looks like at the end because if I'm level 60 and I'm starting to have problems and I have my armor fully upgraded, I have my guns fully upgraded, I need to upgrade some other things but I'm starting to have some issues, this becomes a total skill based game towards the end. And in my opinion, if they would have cut this down about 50 levels and gone 1 to 50, added a few more unique characters, a few more unique bosses, a few more unique ships that weren't just being reskinned with different colors and a few different ways of shooting, I think it would appeal to more of the mass audience. But for me as an indie developer at $6, you cannot go wrong with this game. For people who want to get their kids into it, who never played a shmup, this is a great way to get them into a genre that plays super tight, it's fun, there's explosions, there is a lot going on as you progress. For veterans of the franchise or veterans of this play style, you might be a little bit off put by how slow the progression is before it starts becoming more of that traditional bullet hell that you're used to. So for me, I think the game is fun. I don't think it's going to be for everybody, but at $6, I think it's a really easy game that you should pick up. It's inexpensive and I think you'll have fun with it at least for a while. All right, there's my quick little overview of Galaxy Warfighter. Maybe a little longer than five minutes, but there was a little bit more, I guess, to talk about than I thought. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it gives you a quick overview on what to expect on this game. Again, I'm not done playing it. Every time I felt like it was getting a little monotonous, it got a little bit harder. So that part of it is actually pretty cool. But again, if you're a veteran of this play style, then this one may not be 100% for you. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this game. And like always, guys, keep trolling. Keep rolling. We'll see you next time.